This is a 2019 Audi Q7 Premium Plus with Quattro all-wheel drive. Today we're with our friends at Sears Imported Autos in beautiful Minnetonka, Minnesota. Welcome to our detailed video on the uh, digital cockpit here in the uh, 2019 Audi Q7 and then we'll cover the uh, inf uh, infotainment screen as well. Okay, so this is all digital except for your engine temperature gauge and your fuel gauge on that side. Um, those are always there. Uh, everything else is digital. So basically there's two ways to configure the screen um, the first is as you see it so you got a tack here you've got some extra information including your gear selector right there it always tells you what mode driving mode you're in so this is comfort and if your auto start stop is engaged or disengaged over here you've got an analog well <laughs> a digital analog speedometer with a digital speedometer inside of it Okay, and then this is, uh, of course, would, would be what we would normally consider the driver's information screen. So kind of a traditional look. Or you can expand everything, and that's the second thing. And that was just done by clicking on the view button that's right here. You'll notice that everything on the dashboard stayed the same. It just shrunk up the, the, the RPM gauge and the speedometer, and made everything else larger okay so uh, basically you've got one two three four little tabs across the top of the screen and those are the things that you have available and you access those by clicking the left right arrows on the left side of the steering wheel okay so right here you've got the left right uh, if you get into a window where there's some more options you scroll through it by moving this button and then Audi has the system where um, if there's more information available in that window, then on the dashboard, they give you either a little plus sign on the right or a little tab on the left. Now, this one is not showing up, but I should pick a screen. There we go. So there's the little plus sign. And then over here, we have got uh, another little tab sticking out. That means there's more information available if you click either the right uh, button here or the left button. I'll show you that here in a second. But those stand for the plus sign. That means you can click this button and there's more, more information to be found. The tab button on the left means click this one. Okay. And the infotainment screen is set up the same way. So let's go over here and we'll look at the first tab so you can notice the, the little uh, white line here i've got several things i can scroll through so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to go just to the top of the list you got date and time if you want that to show you've got short-term memory gives you uh, average miles per gallon you got your hours average speed and then how many miles you've got basically it's like a trip one and a trip two with a few extra things thrown into it okay and then you can just press that rotary button to uh, reset them for those of you that are concerned about your energy consumption you can look at here and it will actually tell you how much energy you're consuming with different features on the vehicle driver assistance is right here so if you have lane guidance or adaptive cruise control, that kind of stuff, you can get all that to show up right here. If I scroll down again, okay, this is where it will read traffic signs for you. So uh, like uh, speed limit signs, right? And that's the end of it, okay? So being as you can see that there's a tab over here, 
I'm going to go, and it doesn't matter which screen I am on in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and press the right one, and let's see what else we get. So if I press on that, ah, there's an additional display. And what they're talking about is this screen right up here. So if I click on my wheel, I can have no display, and you just saw you just saw that disappear. So I'm going to go to the back button. You see that little that energy consumption I had disappeared. So that's what that little plus button is allowing you to add. And you can add not only that, you can add consumption, average speed, driving time, distance driven, and date. And to select one of those, you just click on it and then it stays right there. Hit the back button. All right, let's go over to media. Okay, now in media, I've got both a, the tab here and the plus sign showing up, so there are extra options. So let's go first with this button here. This is your sources, okay? And if I press the back button and I go and I press the plus sign, I can choose to have the now playing screen on or not. Okay, just by clicking this, it'll take that now playing screen off. Okay, I, of course, would like to leave that on. Okay, and then I can scroll through my preset radio stations, anything I want. If I just click on it, then it starts to play. Okay, so let's go over one more. This is where your phone is stuff is. So I don't have a phone connected here, but if you did, this is where you'd access everything. Let's go over one more. Okay. Now, this is probably the view that you, that people talk about because it is really cool. Um, this is your navigation view. And, and we're, of course, in, in this widescreen mode. It tells you what the elevation is. tells me that I'm currently off-road, uh, which I'm not. I'm in a parking lot. but And then it tells you the distance that you're seeing, uh, like how high up off the ground you are. And to change that, you just scroll the little scroll wheel and you can scroll way in and out, okay? Now, um, if I've got I've got two more options. See, I've got this tab here and I got this plus button. I kind of like how Audi's giving you different colors for each of the screens. I don't know why they did that, but it's kind of neat. So I'll press this button and now you get, you get your, uh, if you click on map, you can click on last destinations, like home address, which we're not gonna have or favorites, okay? And then you can, you know, just automatically click on those. This is like a shortcut, it's really nice. Okay, if I go back here and I press the plus button on my steering wheel here, the little icon, I can change map colors, which really that's not so much to do with colors, it's so much to do, has more to do with um, day, night options, like how bright your screen is, okay? You just roll, roll scroll up and, and then click on one and it'll select it. All right, map display, okay? You want standard map or you want satellite map? Okay, so I want a satellite map, so I'm gonna leave that. Map orientation, you can say I want a 3D heading up map, so it's always, the car is always north. Okay, you want that. And then you can choose uh, different types of zoom. So do you want it zoom just at an intersection? Do you wanna do it when it's off? Uh, you want off, you want it zooming um, whenever it senses the car slowing down, that kind of stuff. So, okay, so let's go back here. And there is my 3D view. I wish I had a, a <laughs> we're, we live in a pretty flat area. So if there was a hill here though, you would definitely see it. Okay. Um, then uh, that's pretty much the end of the driver's uh, digital cockpit here. Um, the other kind of cool thing I'll mention is that, you know, when you set your cruise, it'll actually put a marker on your on your speedometer as to where it is, which I think is kind of nice. All right, let's move over to the infotainment screen. So to run the infotainment screen, um, you're going to need to use the trackpad and uh, um, the scrolling um, wheel down here. You can also push on this and then your shortcut buttons. It is not a touch screen. So let's take a look. I've gone to menu, which is where I'm at right now. And basically what you have is you have settings, uh, a smartphone interface, Audi Connect, 
map, navigation, telephone, media, radio, sound, and then vehicle. So we're going to go through uh, most of these here uh, real briefly and kind of show you what's underneath them. Uh, so before I do that, let's take a look at the trackpad a minute so you kind of understand that this is set up just like your steering wheel controls. So trackpad, you just slide your finger around. Here, if, if something extra shows up, it's going to give you that little plus tab on the right, and then you click here. If it shows you the little tab on the left, you click here. Okay? And then you got a menu and a, and a back button right here. So here we go. We're going to go into vehicle. And to get in there, I just click on that rotary wheel. And now I can select my different things. So, and then you have all of your driving modes up here. Off-road, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual. So if I press that little tab on the side, now I can I can go to Audi Drive Select, which is just where I was. I can go to Vehicle Settings, Driver Assistance, Air Conditioning, and Service Checks. So let's just go to Driver Assistance for a minute. I click that rotary wheel, and now um, Speed Warning. I can have it on, off at plus 3, plus 5, or plus 10 miles an hour, so it'll warn you. Okay, we'll leave it where it's at. Press the back button. I can also have a manual warning. Go back again. Parking aids. I click on the that rotary wheel, and now I can make a bunch of different settings in here. So the process to do this is always the same. Okay, so like right now, I'm on parking aid, but you see it says driver assist. So under driver assistance, you got things like speed warning, parking aid, Audi adaptive cruise control, distance warning, traffic jam assist. Then, and that's really cool. That's very similar. That's basically the same thing as stop and go cruise control, adaptive cruise control. Does the same thing. Um, you have efficiency assist, uh, Audi presets. Okay, and presense is is a system that Audi puts on. And this car has a front and rear where it'll sense accidents and objects and help to break the car um, for you. Or you know, if you don't do it, it will step in and and, and actually break. Okay, side assist is very similar to uh, what I would call a, um, you know your cross traffic uh, sensors in the back. Active lane assist, of course, keeps helps keep you centered in your lane. You do have an automatic rain sensor, and I'm just rotating this wheel to go through there. Okay, and that is it there. So hit the back button. Okay, and let's hit the back button again here. And we'll go back once more. Okay, so that's vehicle. Going into sound, I'm going to click the wheel again, and now you can set everything here. Your treble, your bass, your subwoofer, balance, fader, sound effects, um, audio pilot. So if I go to, let's just say, balance and fade, and I click, now with that rotating wheel, or by using the trackpad, I can recalibrate where my sound is going to be. And then to get back, you just press the back button. Okay? It does show me I have a, so a few more options under here. Let's see if I do. All right, so then under this tab, you get separate functions for entertainment, telephone, navigation, device reminder signal, speech dialogue system, parking aid, and MMI touch volume. Okay, so if I just look at entertainment, okay, that's where I was. So let's go back for a minute. Go to telephone. Okay, now I can select like ringtones and that kind of stuff, microphone input level. So it's like a sub-menu of the first one. All right, let's go back and back. All right, next one is radio. Now, this one we won't spend much time on. It's pretty self-explanatory. But here is your uh, presets. And then, of course, you have the little button there. So if I press on it, I get my different sources. Well, going back here, let's move on to tele uh, media. Okay. So there, uh, that would be where, like, your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto would come in. Um, or Bluetooth player, okay? We'll go back since we don't have a phone hooked up. Here is just hooking your telephone, so it'll have your messages and mail and, and phone calls and that kind of stuff. That's where that's found. Now, it's interesting to me that they have a, a map icon and a navigation icon. Why there's two, I don't know, but navigation is where you actually plot a course. Okay, now I'll show you a couple quick things here that I think are really cool. 
If you want on this card, you can actually handwrite in. So if I want, let's say, um, 505. H. It gives me an H. <laughs> well, let's just say I don't have this system on my phone, so I am not used to writing with my hand. Um, I've seen other people do this, and they zigzag all over the place, and it goes out great. So... Um, you can do that. Okay. Then I, if I press the rotary dial, I can actually go by letter. Okay. So then I can get, if I want to go to say, and then it starts, you know, you can go through and it'll spell it out for you. All right. So I'm going to, I'm just going to select one here because, well, I can't touch it because it's not touch screen. Okay. Um, if I just go down. Let's see. There we go. And I just pulled down this wheel to get there. All right, so now I'm on this Minnetonka, Minnesota address. I have no idea where I'm going, but I'm going to click it. The lead is being calculated. Please okay. drive to the route shown. All right. So now you can see when I... This is already displaying in the screen. But on the driver's cockpit, you've got you know this, basically the same view, but it's expanded. You have more things left and right. Um, you have a you know a directional arrow to tell you which way you're going to turn, and then you have a nice light blue highlighted line that shows you where you're driving, okay? which is really cool. Now I can also use voice command to do that. Four five two six Minneapolis. Please select an entry. Okay. Number five. This is already the last page. Number five. Line five. Or please say the street or say start root guidance. Start root guidance. Would you like to add the enter destination as a stopover? No, thank you. The previous destination will be overwritten. And there we go. So voice command is available to do that as well as control uh, media and climate. So down here you have your climate control. So you have your three stage heated seats. You do have three stage ventilated seats and notice you can put them on at the same time. That's unusual. I guess I don't know if that blows more heat up on you or how that works but okay um there, there are some cars that do that not every one of them does usually they don't but that's that's kind of interesting of course it's a it's a four zone uh, auto climate control so each four zones can be auto set but you do have your temperature controls right here i really like how audi has these full digital screens and these little buttons that is cool auto of course is just a push and it goes to auto and um, down here, you've got your uh, basic, your modes here. You got, you know, max uh, defrost, excuse me. You got max defrost, you have recirculatory, you have rear defrost, AC, uh, max, and you've got regular AC and then the whole thing off. One of the things I liked is that when you put your hand and finger under here, it actually kind of highlights what you're gonna touch to show you. Um, and then to sync everything, you just go to that setting and it syncs everything. So really, really nice little interface. Okay. Um, other than that, we'll just mention quickly again that there's a radio shortcut by pushing up. There's a media shortcut by pushing down. There's a nav or map shortcut going up and a telephone one going down. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, little more in-depth look at the MMI system in the 2019 Q7. I sure enjoyed showing it to you.